Now, um, I, I agreed and taken the little survey to see if I have ADHD. And there's zero, zero question I have ADHD. I, I, I'm just against the label um, because the label puts you into a category and all of the description, everything we know about this illness is dead, dead wrong. And I don't need somebody to put a label on me that's dead, dead wrong. Um, at least learn the illness or the behavior or the genius skill that you're judging, you know, and judge it to be a genius and um, not so much an illness. Um, this is, a, it, it's like being a singer, you know, the best singer on the world. It's, it's like, um, it's like being an artist. It's a skill. You know, there, there's nothing ill about being as, that's basically what the medical system is doing is they're saying that you're mentally ill if you are a singer. You know, you're mentally ill if you're an artist. You're mentally ill if you're extremely intelligent. That's basically what I'm against. So do I, you know, disagree that I have it? No. You can do all of those tests and, you know, the one that I did uh, said I was moderate. ADHD <laughs> and that's even wrong <laughs> because it depends on how you answer those questions now it would say does your mind uh, have a hard time focusing it's like no I don't have a problem focusing at all um, I tend to if I'm reading to know I'm reading I generally have something else that distracts me so that if I see that I'm distracted I know that I'm not reading so I have these rules that I'm very self-aware that I've created to make sure I don't have a problem focusing. So when I go in and judge, do I have a problem focusing? I'm going to put the answer to more no than yes, because I instinctively created rules that I'm aware that I've watched myself do <laughs> to make me not look like I have that same behavior problem. It's not rocket science, but so see what I mean is that um, with every skill, um, there are some, I mean, genius skill, you have to know how to master that thing to get it right. And I think it's only um, a hard thing to master because it's... Um, and I don't mean this to be insulting to anybody, um, but I'm just going to use it as a description that, okay, let's say there are, you know, the planet is filled with, you know, stupid, dumb rock people. And then all of a sudden you get these behaviors of ADHD show up and they'll start off with, oh, there's first one and oh now there's 10. Oh, now there's a hundred. Oh, now there's a thousand of them. Um, the cause of ADHD comes from solving problems over our gen generation. We are consistently solving our, our genetic problems, even though we don't know it. We are, we are improving. Like, like it's the need to solve a problem. And when you're trying to solve a problem, you think you found the solution that you have at that time, only to live out another generation to find out, oh, that wasn't such a good idea. So it is a matter of genetics that you solve a few problems, you get a few a little smarter. That'll affect your DNA. So then you're going to have kids that are eventually going to be smart. So while we have these third world countries and um, just the way the structure is, you'll see homeless people, you'll see people with uh, drug addicts, any social problem that you've recognized anywhere in the globe has been a warning sign that we've been making the wrong decisions. If, if we're actually doing things right, there are no homeless people, nobody's on drugs, nobody's got any health problems. Turns out all of your health problems have a cause. <laughs> if you do everything right, you won't even get cancer, you won't get AIDS, nothing is just created out of thin air. Human beings create all of reality through our behaviors and our actions. We form particles to make stuff. Even if it's a disease, we are the ones that are, are creating it all. But if we're doing everything right, 
um, nothing would would cause us harm so um, while we're trying to learn and overcome and you know we're getting smarter so that's what ADHD is is socially we're just getting real real smart so you get um, you know dumb people lemmings with an intelligent group and um, see you may think being a leader is the right thing to do but smart people know you don't want to lead you only want to lead yourself so these people that, with, that are this new intelligent beings that are being created know not to be the leaders of these dumb people because that's a repeating of the same game um, so they're not one of them are gonna step up and say I'm a leader and think that they know the answers to everything um, well I'm ADHD and I'm standing up saying we need to do that and I'll tell you it's frustrating as hell because you get attacked um, everybody will say you are wrong there you know and those attacks that negative energy does cause health problems <clears throat> So I know that uh, um, we create our own reality, and I know the hell of my life, I'm creating it. <laughs> I can see myself creating it. I'm putting shit out there that I know is going to piss people off, and they're going to come back at me pissed off. Like, I'm not going to understand that. I fully understand. Um, that has been my challenge, is to improve on my communication skills, which is why I started a YouTube channel. Um, to learn how to communicate in a way that I'm not so offensive. But let's face it, if you're told you're wrong, it's going to be offensive. You don't want to hear you're wrong. I haven't mastered that skill yet, but I'm working on it. Um, it's, it's almost like need a lot more ADHD people that can kind of see the bigger picture, that can work together on this, and 100th monkey concept will just fall into place and we'll all be savants. We'll all be geniuses. Uh, we'll all be able to learn how to master our skills. But <clears throat> intention was uh, something that really, really helps guide me. And I've mentioned before that, see, you have to interrupt your, your brain process. Um, your ADHD is obsessive compulsive thoughts. So you will be obsessive compulsively thinking about something over and over and over and over again. And I do that <laughs> and my life has been hell so I will live in perpetual hell if I don't have things that inspire or, or um, grab my attention it's the same thing as you know I have no problem reading as long as I have something else there distracting me because then as soon as I see I'm distracting I know I'm not reading Therefore, I have no concentration problem because I've set my environment up to make sure that I can focus. Um, but when I'm walking and, uh, you know, doing the shit I need to do during my day, I want to make sure that my intention for the day is always there. So I need an interruption, which is why I, I created this water bottle concept, because it makes you self-responsible. I think it's a massive cure for anybody that's got ADD. But it'll help anybody because you've been trans you you've been made to believe that you're lacking and this makes you uh, the whole concept and how it works will make you feel like you're full of so you're not chasing your own tail anymore it's like if you make people feel like they aren't loved and the only way to feel love is to buy that car or buy that TV or get those big boobs or you know stuff is the only way you're going to get love then you're gonna do everything in your power to chase for that love because that's who you are and that's what you want in your life is love so what this concept does is it makes you feel love because um, everything is based on feelings it's not just uh, a label that interrupts my thought process your thoughts create uh, peptides and proteins for you to experience the feelings of your thoughts so it is intentionally I intentionally feel what it feels like to have these intentions anytime I drink it so that's constantly working on my DNA um, because it's creating constant different uh, peptides and proteins that attaches to DNA 
So at the same time, I have uh, no complaints and no excuses because you are creating your own experience. If you have a complaint or an excuse, it's not because of the world doing something to you. You are doing something to create the world to do that. So um, that's where as ADHD, um, when you want to convince any of them that they're geniuses, it's like, why are you a genius? What is your end goal? And if you're a genius, then you know how to make it happen. Um, it's, it's just like every business plan. You have a goal that you, you want to achieve. Um, analyze that goal. Take a look at it. See the picture. See if anybody in the world would ever get injured or hurt by that goal you want to achieve. If, if the goal is good for you, it's good for your society, then chances are it's a good goal to go and chase after. Then all you need is a, um, what does it take for you to get there? So you make a list, what needs to happen? And maybe you need to think about that and figure it out and ask the universe for some answers, but you'll get it if you're looking for it. But you get all of your qualifications or, or your requirements to what does it take to make that goal happen and then you need a time frame on it. Time is amazing. Time is what pushes things to get done. And you are the creator of time. Learned that one when I went to programming school. Um, while living through friggin' hell, I had to do these projects in impossible time frames. Um, you know, like the, I'd have to create some kind of application in two days. And I had to read like 500 pages of the most boring shit possible. So ADHD cannot receive information that they're not interested in. Trust me, I had zero interest in reading any type of programming. There's no plot, no nothing that kept me interested. Um, lots of names. I suck at remembering names. That's an intentional thing. You give me your name instantly. I'm not even listening to it. I don't know why, but I've turned it off because I remember... I meet too many people and too many names and it's just too much for me to remember so I shut it off. I intentionally watch myself shut it off so as soon as somebody gives me a name, um, that's everybody does that. If you're bad at remembering names, you are intentionally doing that. Can you see yourself doing it? Uh, if you're the observer of yourself, you can see yourself doing it. So one of the um, savant things about myself is I see the world as if I'm on top of the room looking down. Um, and I don't think anybody else really views life from that perspective. They only view life from this perspective. But when you look at yourself from a totally different perspective and you see what yourself is doing and you take full responsibility, you can sort of see how you're creating bullshit. Um, and I am not the master at this. I'm still a work in progress myself. Still learning how to communicate effectively. When I get that right, then I won't be so offensive. I happen to believe everybody wants love and peace. What I've sort of deducted is everybody wants to really die while saying they want to be saved. Y'all have a death wish. Um, and don't really realize it. But if I had a conversation with y'all, point out, see, you want to die. Um, if you're religious and believe in a Bible, you want peace and heaven and, you know, everything loving. The only way to get there is if you're dead. So you got to create a world that's going to eventually kill you because that's the only way you're going to get what you want to get. So, you know, for me to figure out, okay, how do I get past that heavy brainwashing Bibles do? Um, why is it you can't get peace and love on this planet we are capable we're human we're freaking geniuses um we're just immature right now we don't know our own skills <laughs> but anyways when i was at the in this school doing these projects two days to accomplish it the first day i'm in total shock i can't move i can't function mostly because you're in fear if you're in fear you're not going to be able to accomplish anything and that's generally what you are when you first get a project that's so overwhelming is you can't move at all. So then basically to accomplish this project, I had to do it one day. And you know what? Every single project, and I, I'm just using those time frames as an example, but every single one of those projects were handed in time. And 
that really, really amazed me that uh, you can accomplish anything as long as you put a deadline to it. That's what the corporate structure does all the time. You know, it says you got to have this done yesterday. And guess what? It always gets done yesterday. So if you really wanted to make a global shift or create any type of goal, all you have to do is have a time frame for it. I know for me, my time frame is 2012, December, my birthday, the world will be changed. <laughs> Peace out.